Italian guys, welcome back. I'm excited. New series I'm starting now, so a new uh, series on the channel, new playlist on the channel, and it's gonna be called Myth, uh, Myth Busting. So, as you guys uh, might be aware, most likely, I recently made three responses videos towards a video made by an ex-Sanga member. And while going and making these videos and going through comments, I, I faced all kinds of responses. And by all kinds, I mean all kinds of responses. So I decided, you know what? Let, I felt like uh, I want to share my understanding and the cognitions that are uh, blossoming or happening within me um, as I've been a disciple and uh, a brahmachari for, uh, in the, with Swamiji for the last five years. And I wanted to share how the different kinds of cognitions which have kind of grown and are kind of still expanding in my inner space as I'm seeking to understand uh, the powerful cognitions that Swamji has shared uh, with me and with everybody um, since I've met him and in all the videos that I've seen. So I started, I'm going to start a series myth busting um, today. Uh, well, first, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. In this video, the topic is responsibility, so I might, you know, these uh, cognitions or these topics might have various episodes, maybe not one after the other, but because, I mean, there's so much to tell and the expansion is kind of endless, uh, or so it seems. Today, it will be responsibility because I did speak about responsibility in my first response of the video, and I do speak about it in various other videos. Um, it is a powerful cognition that is very dear to me, and I'll share you why in a moment. Um, and uh, yeah, I got all kinds of responses and uh, people did not necessarily quite grasp what I was trying to say. Um, so I, 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 was, I, was, I want to try and find a way to, um, to express at least how this cognition is happening and blossoming inside my inner space since I met Swamiji. So why responsibility? What, what got me into responsibility? Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you rather quickly, during my inner awakening, I had an intense experience. I think it was around the fifth day, if I'm not mistaken. So on the third, fourth day, two days prior to that experience, I was having experiences where every time I used to stop my stare and just stay there for a moment, a 2D diagram of Ganesha, of Ganesha would appear. And, and I, I could like kind of gaze at it and I, just, I could be in that space of like thoughtlessness and just like that. So that experience had, had been, uh, I had been going through for almost 48 hours. And after that, on the fifth day, if I'm not mistaken, we had a Homa, a Kalabed of a Homa. So Homa is a sacred fire ritual where you invoke the energy of a, uh, of a god uh, or a goddess. Uh, and you uh, basically imbibe that energy within you or it kind of you imbibe it and at the same time it awakens that energy within you so it allows you to have breakthroughs, to raise your frequencies, break patterns and refresh your inner space. And so that Homa was intense actually. There's the Bija Mantras which are the specific mantras we chant for specific gods or goddesses. And when we were chanting the Bija Mantras of Lord Kalberva, which sounds something like Om Hamrim Rum, like that, um, these mantras were vibrating so intensely in my body it was crazy so first thing first that experience was intensified this Ganesha thing so I at one point I just moved my eyes I just stared at a random window because we were outside a hotel and all that I just stared at a window at the hotel and just like within two seconds that's all that Ganesha would be there and then I would feel like I was being pulled by my third eye, by my forehead. At that time, I was not really speaking in the third eye language, but I felt like through my forehead, my, my I don't know, the, like the soul was coming out. It wanted to go out and it wanted to go towards that, um, that uh, Ganesha. And so that got there. And then at the same time, the vibrations of the mantras were so high and at some point, it was so intense that I couldn't feel my body anymore. Like I was hitting my body and I couldn't feel my body. I could see it, but I couldn't feel it. It was like, I don't know, it was like as if it did not exist or at least as, as if my nervous system was not 
uh, was not existent. Like there was no nervous, I could control my body and all that, but in terms of pain, wherever, whatever experience I used to have of pain, that experience was not there. Even the experience of just uh, feeling the body was not there. And I got scared out of nowhere. I got scared. I was just like, I'm going to leave the body. Like I really felt like I was going to leave the body through the forehead. And I got really scared. And out of nowhere, I was in a space where I had no thoughts other than that experience, that just intense experience. And out of nowhere, a random thought was able to rise above that frequency, that space that I was experiencing. And made me settle down or made me just kind of settle down and that thought was oh no no wait i can't leave the body now i have some responsibilities this thought came out of nowhere and i was never somebody who lived a responsible life as what society speaks of responsibility um yeah i was kind of a self-sustained kind of person um, yeah, basic responsibilities I was doing, but I was not like a responsible person or somebody who would be like inspire responsibilism to people. Uh, and that was weird because I never really fully understood and believed in responsibility also. And I could see that the experience that people had of responsibility was not something I, I was looking forward to. And, and so, yeah, so out of nowhere in this intense experience in front of that fear, suddenly I'm just thinking about responsibility. I was like, what, 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 where does that come from? I didn't have a clue. So since then, this idea of responsibility has been very appealing to me because I still don't understand why this thought came at that moment. Uh, so when Swamiji started to talk about responsibility, automatically I clicked and I started to contemplate and internalize a lot about what is responsibility. And I realized that um, the responsibility that we refer to in the world and that some of the comments were mentioning or were trying to pull me towards um, in the previous videos uh, that responsibility is not true responsibility. When we talk, when I talk about responsibility, I'm referring to the tatua. When Swamiji revealed the four tatuas, the tatua of responsibility. Tatua means the, the cosmic principle, the principle that is responsible to allow the universe to function. So the tatua of responsibility is what I sought because I never understood many things that Swamiji was mentioning about responsibility. I never really grasped what it was. And I guess I still not fully grasp it, but definitely what I'm grasping now is totally different than what I used to grasp five years back. And um, so what I realized is this, when we talk about responsibility in the world, generally, we always feel like it's a kind of a burden. It's a heaviness on the shoulder, some form of duty, something you have to do and there's no other way. But there's no bliss, there's no freedom, there's no ecstasy and experienced through responsibility. At least I've never seen somebody who's ecstatic about being responsible, uh, other than Swamiji, which was weird. <laughs> then I started to realize, okay, I don't think he's talking about the same thing. He uses the same word, but he doesn't mean the same thing because I've never seen somebody who talks about responsibility and who is ecstatic about it. And he just tells people to take responsibility more and more and more. I always see people who feel the heaviness and the burden of responsibility and it's like, it's kind of a bondage for them and they feel, you know, they don't have freedom. They just have to be responsible. So what I realized is that the first step, when we start seeking towards responsibility, we have to understand that Paramashiva is responsible for the universe. Swamiji says Paramashiva feels responsible for the entire universe. The entire universe is manifested from him. So when I started to seek about responsibilism, I was seeking from the space of what does, how, what does it mean Paramashiva is responsible, right? What does it mean? So first I realized I have to get into a space or at least have a glimpse of the space of Paramashiva. From that glimpse and from that space, I have to start to look at the tattoo of responsibility. If I look at the tattoo of responsibility from where I am now, from a human uh, small identity point of view, there's no way I'm going to understand what he means. And there's no way I'm going to understand how bliss can arise from the space of responsibilism. So, so then I thought one of the biggest thing is that we have to start to look to, at the responsibilism from the context of Paramashivoham, Paramashivatwa. I am the creator of the entire universe. I am responsible for everything that is happening in the cosmos. From that context, we have to start to look into what is true responsibilism, not just the responsibility that we have, like I mentioned, in the everyday life. And only then the seeking 
will allow the revelations to happen. The tattoo of responsibility will, will open up inside of us, will reveal itself to me, to you, to whomever is seeking towards it. And um, give the right experience of what is responsibilism. So when I talk about responsibilism, I'm talking from that context. So don't understand responsibility from a, a general idea. I no longer, I, I don't believe that actually for me, after five years of contemplating on this, the responsibility that we talk in the real life is not true responsibility. It's not responsibility. It's a kind of a, uh, I mean, it is to a certain extent, uh, but it's very superficial, very at a gross level. It's not the, it's not the reality. It's not the truth. It's not the truth. It's like a diluted, 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 you know, experience or manifestation of true responsibilism. So we have to look in and that's where, that's where a lot of my seeking went is I am responsible for the reality that I am manifesting. Whatever I am manifesting, I am responsible for that. And when we start to seek, when I started to seek uh, into responsibilism from that context, then I started to realize that the power is always here. It is never outside. Then I realized that blaming anything outside is a very childish way of existing. So that's why I feel that everybody should look into what is true responsibilism? What is the tattoo of responsibility? What does it mean when Swamiji says, I am responsible? Or when Swamiji says, Paramashiva feels responsible and is responsible for the entire universe. What does it mean? We cannot just copy paste our experience of like, oh yeah, I built a house, I need to pay the bill, I am responsible. That, that's, that's such a superficial way of understanding it. That's definitely not how the cosmos runs. Um, doesn't mean that this is not there, it does exist. It is a form of responsibility, but it is not responsibility. It's only one, um, I would say, weak manifestation of that cosmic principle. So that's what I wanted to share. And uh, also that is one of the reasons why I took uh, sannyas or brahmacharya in the first place is that I wanted to understand what is responsibility. And first I realized that first I have to feel responsible. I have to realize that I am responsible for my existence. I am responsible for the reality that is happening in front of me. Only then I can start and, you know, be responsible for, you know, share about responsibility or be responsible for things outside of me. First thing, I, first click I need to have is at least I need to be clear that I'm manifesting the reality, whether I'm fully aware of, of, of how I'm doing it or not. I guess that that's not necessarily needed initially, but at least the conviction that yes, I, am, I manifested that, whatever it is in front of you, whether it is a situation which seems torturous, whether it is a situation which is happy, exciting, sad, uh, kind of boring, or just, uh, you know, serene, whatever it is, or even some chaos or tranquility or a nice, beautiful environment or an ugly environment or a nice, fragrant environment or a smelly environment, whatever it is, I have to look into like, oh, how did I manifest it that? That seeking, that desire to, to, to understand the truth and to see the truth and the reality behind the experience, um, I feel it should be cherished and you should cherish. I should, I definitely continue to cherish and I'll share more about it also. But that's the first thing I wanted to talk about myth busting of responsibility is like responsibility has to be cognized from the space of Paramashivoham. So first you need to have a glimpse of Paramashivoham to even have an idea of in which direction you need to walk towards the principle of responsibility. Otherwise you will be, you will be, you'll be bound to, you will only be able to cognize responsibility from what you know, which is the human societal kind of understanding of responsibility, which is not ultimate. It is not the tatua for responsibility. So yes, that's for today's video, myth-busting responsibility. So that's the answer to many of the comments that were mentioned. Um, so responsibility is a much bigger thing than just um, casual things in daily life. It is that also, but it's definitely much more rich, deeper, and much more powerful than that. So that's for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Nityanam.